The black and white filter can be a great tool to add in your post-processing workflow. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at the filter and see what features it has available to increase your workflow and give you a little bit of creative style in your photo editing journey. So stay tuned and let's go. Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the black and white adjustment layer or filter, I should say, inside of On One Photo Raw. Now, if this is our first time meeting, my name is Chris. I am the content creator here on Free Will Photos where I go over photo editing applications so you can learn how to get your photo edits out and into the world. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're down there, check the show notes or the description box. I have an email list where I send out updates to presets and just all kinds of great information and free stuff at times uh, for On One Photo Raw. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and sign up for that list. It's completely free. And last but not least, if you find any value in today's video, go ahead and smash the like button. Helps YouTube share this video with people just like you looking for a little bit of help using On One Photo Raw. So here's the deal. I already have the black and white adjustment layer or adjustment, I should say, uh, on this photo. And I'll show you what the photo looks like without it. There's a little bit of color and, you know, it's all great, fine and dandy. When you first open the adjustment layer, you'll see the black and white uh, filter as the title, your masking option, opacity for the overall uh, impact of the filter and then you also have your presets here and there's a handful of presets that on one offers you I actually have a preset here called accurate black and white convert uh, and this is basic for uh, the mathematical equation that was used to convert color uh, video or colors as a as a whole into black and white back in the uh, the old school TV days when they were all black and white. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, then just drop it in the comment section below and I'll share that with you. So let's go ahead and get into the filter itself. First segment of the filter is the conversion filter. This is you telling on one photo raw what to do with the colors in your photo. How do you want it to work? Do you want it to work in a color response manner or do you want it to work in a channel mixer manner where the channel mixer is a little bit more simple to understand because all you do is you drag this slider to the left or the right and you just watch your photo and the segments of your photo you know when you get a desirable outcome we don't have to be like overly uh complicated with this right when you get something that you like then all you have to do is leave it there and move on Whereas the color response, it is a little bit different uh, because it gives you more control over the colors in your image. So if you want to increase the yellows, you can do that. If you want to decrease the greens, uh, you can do that. And if you look at these uh, little leaves here, they're getting darker. And if I bring it up, they get brighter. Uh, and you know you can just do a series of edits to each one of those colors and you'll see the response here in the image this is one of the most popular ways of editing black and white a lot of people they like control but if you are not one of those people then don't don't feel bad about using the channel mixer all right channel mixer works perfectly fine you just you know it's your photo edit now, you have two other buttons here in the conversion module or a conversion segment. You have the auto conversion. When you go to color response, you have the auto conversion, right? And it's just going to make adjustments based off of what it thinks the, uh, the best balance for the color conversions are. This is making a much darker edit overall. Uh, and because there's only one color that was boosted, right? Now, one thing that I will note, 
you are not adding saturation when you are using black and white because there's nothing to saturate in a black and white photo. There's no color, right? Instead, what you're doing is either increasing or decreasing the brightness value of that color range, all right? That's very important to understand because there are some, in future videos, I'll get into some creative ways of using a black and white adjustment layer combined with curves and some other uh, items that you can use to manipulate color prior to putting the black and white layer on. But just note that you are not adjusting the color uh, by saturation or hue. What you're doing is just telling on one, if the color is red, I want the reds to either be darker or brighter in my monochrome image or my black and white image. That's it. All right. Now you also have this eye picker tool where if you click it, you can click on a segment of the photo and drag it left to right and it will select the color for you. So if you're not a hundred percent sure what colors are in your photo or, you know, how this even works, you have two options. You can just grab a slider, drag it left to right, or you can grab this eye picker tool, click, and then drag that left or right, and it'll choose the right color for you. Uh, that is a way for you to figure that out for yourself. And then, of course, what you can do here is you can come back into Channel Mixer. There is, uh, of note, there is no eye picker or auto uh, feature available. So, now that we have our conversion here, we're going to move into the tone section. Now, the tone section is actually pretty interesting because you have a lot of the exact same stuff that's over here in the develop uh, segment underneath tone. You have a lot of those exact same ones. So if you develop your tone over here, then when you come over here, you may not need to do it as much. There are pros and cons of doing it that way. Uh, and I'm not going to get into them in this video, but what you can do is you can click the auto tone feature. This is essentially the AI auto without adjusting any of the color to the photo. Whereas if you come over to develop and you hit AI auto, it's going to come down here and mess with your saturation, your vibrate or vibration, your vibrance. Um, and that may not be something that you want. Whereas over here, it's only going to impact your contrast, highlight shadows, whites, blacks. All right. Now you do have two options that do not get affected by the auto uh, toner, and that's your brightness and your details. Now, depending on what it is that you're trying to do, you can bring your details down and it makes it a little bit more of a uh, chilled out, muted uh, contrast or muted in the contrast, I, sh I should say here, uh, in the sharpness. I don't know. Anyway, you can play around with this slider. It, it, it's very obvious what it does uh, and you can just pull it to taste, right? Or you can crank it the other way and get like this super grungy black and white photo uh, I could see this being necessary, particularly in some sort of urban, uh, maybe a graffitied wall or something like that, a, a shot of that from street photography. Uh, and then, of course, brightness and, and darkness, right? You can make the overall exposure dark or you can make it overall bright. Uh, now, I don't use the tone module by itself. Uh, in this particular case, just because I can't mask in the way that I want this tone to be. So what I recommend you do is you get a base exposure that you like, right? Something that you are like, okay, that looks like a very good uh, tonal range, black and white. And you can also use your levels up here to figure that out. As you can see, this is a very, very dark image just because there's very little information over here uh, on the right side of my histogram where my midtones, my highlights, and my whites are. So just food for thought with the 
toner segment, or I'm sorry, the tone segment. Now, the next segment is the toner segment. This is designed to give a simulated version of paper during the chemical conversion uh, or the chemical development of film back in the day when you were in the dark room. Uh, and I think this is really cool. So the very first thing that you have here is the type of paper. Now, you can make, these are essentially presets, right? So if I were to click this uh, cyan, cyanotype one, it's going to adjust my settings down here. What it's doing is it's giving me this white color in the highlights. Now, I can click on this and I can change it to whatever color I want using the normal color selection tools here inside of on one or you know for for your computer you can use the color wheel and just click and drag and make that whatever you want it to be right uh, however you want that to work out now the reason why you're not seeing it is because we have not adjusted the hue the amount uh, or I'm sorry we we've adjusted the hue we have not adjusted the amount so as I pull up on this slider, this is just like the split toning uh, filter, if you're familiar with that. And if not, stay tuned. I got a video coming up about that. Uh, but here you just pull up the amount and now, you know, you have this nice tone over the entire image. This could be a really good one stop shop version of split toning your your black and white images if that's something you want to do. All right. Now, this balance slider is really the balance between the highlight uh, color and the shadow color for your toner. You can pull it to the left and you're going to get more of these blues. And you, know, you see, I have like that yellow highlight or you can pull it to the right and you're going to get more of those yellows. But you can still see the blue in the shadows. So you, you can play around with the balance slider. It, it makes perfect sense on how it works. And then, of course, you have the exact same thing uh, that's up here with the shadows and the highlights. Of note, you have this little swap tone colors, right? So if I click this, it's going to change it to put the yellow in the shadows and the blue in the highlights. And that may be something you want to go for, right? Uh, now we're getting like this really yellow washed out image. But if I pull it up, uh, you start to see those dark blues in the highlights. Now... This is a very, very bright color, which is why it's overpowering the image. So just make sure that if you get something and you're like, man, I don't like the way that that looks, just try flipping the tones and maybe you'll get something that you like and then you can balance it. Uh, but general rule of thumb, dark colors should go into the shadows. Bright colors should go into the highlights. Uh, now, when you start to do... Uh, all of this toning, you may lose your darkest black point and your uh, brightest white point. Well, if you want to preserve those, and I think you would if you're working in black and white, you want to go ahead and check this little radio bubble. And this is going to give you your preserve whites and blacks. And it just brings the image back to the full gamut of your whites are still pure white and they're not saturated with the tone color. And your blacks are still pure black and they're not saturated with a tone color either. So something to keep in mind, you can see the difference in the image. It goes from a more washed out image uh, to something with a little bit more contrast and uh, you know, the level of edginess, so to speak. Now we're going to move on to the last segment. But if you found value in today's video... Go ahead and smash that like button. All right. Now, the film grain. The film grain segment is something that you would have to play with. If you're familiar with using film, uh, the higher the number, the more the grain. Right. So I'll just go ahead and click on the Fuji 100. Or actually, I'll click on the uh, if for I think it's Ilford. I don't know. I'm going to click on this one that says Delta 100. And as you can see, let me zoom in here a little bit because it's a little hard to see the grain without uh, zooming in. So let me turn it off. So 
right now the image has no grain all right uh and i shot this i believe well it's at 500 iso so there's a little bit of digital noise already introduced into the image but it it's pretty much non-existent so when you come over here you can add in the film grain this is using 100 iso film uh, back in the day you had to have your light sensitivity you can see that it adds in some noise or grain whatever you want to call it into the shadowed areas because that's typically where it lives right uh, now you can adjust the size make those blots a little bit bigger as you can see it moves around here and when you're doing this on your own images it'll make full sense i promise uh, and then do you have your amount you can have just a little bit of that or you can have a whole bunch of that right now i said that when you have a higher iso you get more noticeable effect of the grain and you can see from 100 to 3200 uh, it's a different vibe now based off of what you're trying to go for in your image this may be exactly what you want now you can just pull the mount slider down and you know uh, tune this to your own taste but something for you to just keep in mind so in a nutshell there are the four segments of the on one black and white filter you have the color conversion which gives you two options. You have the tone, which gives you the same options that you get inside of the develop, but with uh, more focus on working here with the conversion to the black and white. And then you also have a toner section, which allows you to throw in a little bit of color to spice up your black and white image. And then finally, you have your film grain section. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Now, if you're new to On One Photo Raw or you're thinking about picking up a copy, check out the description box below. I have a link. It is an affiliate link, but at no extra cost to you, you can download On One Photo Raw. Try it out. If you happen to buy it, then this channel does get a little commission. Uh, again, at no extra cost to you. It just helps this channel grow and continues to support uh, the content that I create right here on Free Will Photos. And like I said before, if you found value in today's video, smash the like button just so it helps YouTube share it with people who are looking for it just like you. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.